Hi guys, thanks for joining me once again. Now this week is my full review of the Sinus Terrain T125. Straight off the bat, I have a lot to get through on this review and I don't want to um, drag it out and make it too much of a long video. So I'm just going to go through the bullet points and then I'm going to do a walk around the bike and some of the things that I've noticed, some of the things that are uh, slight negatives as well that you'll be interested in knowing. And um, yeah, let's get straight on with it. So to start with, seat comfort. The seat is quite a comfortable seat. It's quite soft. It does sli uh, slant down towards the tank. So it's all right for about an hour. But after that, it does get a bit uncomfortable. There's nothing behind me at the moment. I'm just going to stamp on the brakes. Now, the brakes are very good. They're combined as well. So when you push the rear brake, the front and the rear work. So just stomping on it now. And, it, you know, it's, it's just okay. It's pretty, pretty good brakes, really. Now, that does cause a problem when you're going off-road, of course, because you don't want the front to lock up sometimes um, which when you're on loose muddy stones or mud or whatever it does lock up on the front quite easily and doesn't give you the control that you need for off-road riding so I guess you could say that's um, something I'm not so impressed with to be honest with you I, I would like I wish it was independent braking but they've got to do that because Euro 5 say if you haven't got a bike with ABS then you need to link the brakes it is what it is on that front so uh, you get used to it but like in this video here this is um, Curious Goose who I've recently done a video with he's going down the, the rocky hill and he's trying to control the bike and what he wants really is just to control the rear brake uh, but he can't you know the front keeps on locking up all the time over the loose terrain so Although it's still a very good all-terrain bike, it does fall down on that part, and that's not the Sinus's fault, it's just the way, it's just what they had to do. So another thing I'd like to mention about this bike is that it isn't an adventure bike style. And that is exactly what you get with this bike. It really is great for going on adventures and finding new places like this. I've really enjoyed find, finding some um, off-road green lanes. There you go, mate. And uh, even up here, look, you can go up here. I wouldn't normally go up here. I don't really know what's up here, actually. But it's brilliant. You know, you can really have a, a wonderful adventures on this bike. And we've got the 50-50 tyres as well, so they're part road and part adventure bike style. And uh, yeah, it's really, really enjoyable to go and find new places and explore. In comfort as well. And the balancing shaft for a 125, it, you hardly get any vibrations at all. It's really, really good on that front. The suspension Although it's only got a 17 inch wheel, it would be nice if it had a 19. But the suspension does soak up the bumps very, very well. And even on off-road stuff, um, again, you know, the suspension is, is very good, really. It's quite firm, but it is, it is good. And the handling of the bike overall is, is very light. It's light on top. You know, if you're an experienced person, you're gonna enjoy this bike. And if you're a learner rider, then it's a, a very good bike to, to learn to ride on. Changing gears is very positive. I haven't had any false neutrals. And uh, what I normally find actually, let me just show you, just knock it down a couple gears. So it is actually good for changing gear without the clutch. Just load the gear shifter off with the throttle and it will go up very, very smoothly, very positively as well. Fifth gear. Sixth gear, 3,200 revs, 23 miles per hour. Sixth gear, roll on power. Not a lot, but it's still pulling. And it's not showing any signs of struggling either. So again, the Sinus Terrain uh, gets a, a big tick for the engine. Uh, not only the power, you know, people say that these bikes haven't got a lot of power. 
which is true, but it, to me it just rides like any other 125. You know, you're not, the, none of them are, they're, they're all restricted to the power that they can cough out. Yes, it's down on the figures slightly. You know, they might be able to get a few more horsepower out to keep it low and illegal, but essentially all 125s are just lack a little bit of power. And there's nothing wrong with this one here. This, uh, I'm not just saying this, but if I had a 125, then at the moment I feel this would definitely be the bike I would have, beyond a shadow, shadow of a doubt. So um, yeah, like, as I say, the suspension's great. Um, I've been on some real tough all-terrain surfaces with this as well. And um, again, you just feel very confident with it because it is so light compared to some of the bigger bikes. And this is a bumpy surface here, but again, it's handling it all very well. Looks like the tide's still in down there, so I'll give that a miss down there, so we'll turn around. But uh, turn around here somewhere. But yeah, again, it's, it's a shame it's got the combined brakes, really, because when you stomp on the rear brake and you want to fling the back end out a little bit, it just um, makes the front... Uh, put, puts power in the front brake as well, but hey-ho, it's what it is. And again, that's what they've got to do to keep it within Euro 5, so... Stood up on the pegs. My arms are, are dead straight. Very, very comfortable. I'm 5 foot 8. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's really good. It really is, uh, the, you know, the bars are nice and high up. And it works very well. It's so nice having a bike that is, you know, light like this. And you just know that even if you do drop it, then you can easily pick it up again. You can have a, a, a whale of a time off-roading on this bike. Brilliant. I have got some more videos coming up on my uh, myself and somebody else off-roading, which I'll put up at some time. But yeah, I mean, it's it's a, a, a perfect off-roader. The only thing which it lacks slightly is a bit of uh, ground clearance, because I think it's about 157 millimeters ground clearance you get on this bike. But you have, what you have to remember is that this is a learner-friendly bike at 3,000 pounds. So, you know, would you want it to go up in price so you get all those extras? I don't know. Some people would some people wouldn't but predominantly you're going to be riding this on the road so that's that's the way to look at it and certainly in my time of having this bike i uh i get attached to any bike because i you know I, i'm passionate about motorbikes but um this little 125 it, i just love it i honestly do i i think it's absolutely fantastic if i was oops if i was 17 and uh got a bike like this I just I would just be exploring everywhere I'd, I'd absolutely love this machine the build quality is very good it feels very stable it's relatively flickable on the 17 inch rims um, and you've got the crash bars as well uh, the amount you get value wise out of riding this bike is uh, it's, it's lovely it really is it's very very good all right going guys so what's it like on the dual carriageway well it's definitely not really at home here it's definitely a bike that you'd have to duck tuck behind a lorry for for a bit get comfortable and just sit back or take a b road it's probably a better thing to do 
also the screen is doing quite a good job as well. It is hitting the top of my helmet, but uh, no buffeting whatsoever. I guess we have to take the weather conditions into play on that one. Uh, and it is a lovely day today, but uh, that screen is doing it a very good job and it's coughing it around outside my shoulders. Alright, so what's the Sinus terrain like it filtering? Well, the answer is I haven't done a lot of it, and the reason being is because of the big panniers on the back. It's hard to kind of gauge where I'm sat now, where those panniers are, so. I don't really feel too confident filtering on this particular 125, which is ironic really when 125s are generally, you know, excellent at filtering, you know, due to their small nimble size. But uh, I guess that for the Sinus Terrain, for me personally, I, um, I have found myself holding back a bit more. Okay, let's get some of the stats out of the way first. It's a single cylinder, four stroke, water cooled engine. It produces 12.7 horsepower at 9,500 RPM. Torque wise, we're looking at 10.5 Newton meters at seven and a half thousand. It's a six speed gearbox, which is very good, very smooth. And I've had no false neutrals. Overall, the gearbox is pretty excellent, really. Fuel capacity is 14 liters. And take it from me, this bike seems to use hardly any fuel at all. I mean, it must be well into the 100 miles to the gallon. There you go. Fuel is at £1.36 as of time of filming and I've just put in £8.90 for 150 miles of travelling. Right, the seat height is 780 millimetres which is quite low. Now I'm 5 foot 8, I've got a 30 inch inside leg measurement. I find it very very easy, I can flat foot it with a, a slightly bent knee as well. Uh, it's very very easy to ride. Um, I've got a, a great position here on my arms uh, and in fact I'd even say actually that this is probably one of the best bikes I've ever ridden for um, not aching my shoulders. Um, it's really high up and it's it's quite far back as well because obviously it's it's quite a smallish bike uh, you don't feel like you're sort of leaning forward on it uh, the width of the bars is good as well almost perfect really for just what you want for this style of bike yeah overall it's just quite a comfortable seating position to be in uh, when i put my legs on the pegs uh, the gears are in a nice place i got a, a this is absolutely perfect again this sort of angle here on my knees so overall to sit on the bike and ride the bike is is absolutely superb the, the engine's powder coated nicely the the gear mechanism here is is sealed nicely with the rubber bungs here we've got the um, removable rubber foot pegs on the rider and the passenger side uh, we've got chain guards um, and remember you're paying 2,999 quid for this, okay, so you get the crash bars, you get the panniers, the top box, bash plate on the bottom of the bike. As standard, you do get a centre stand for chain maintenance and if you are parking in a tight area. And some of the other bits I like on it is the rear light. I think that looks absolutely awesome. In fact, the whole back end looks really good actually when you look at the uh, twin ex it's not a twin exhaust it's, it's basically one manifold going into a twin exhaust there I think that looks great I think it looks substantial um, to the untrained eye if you're somebody who doesn't know much about bikes uh, people will come up and say oh what engines and that and they're really surprised when you say it's a 125 they can't believe it you know and and you can see why it is uh, for, for road presence reasons, it is quite a, a big bike and um, that's exactly what you want really on, on the road. And certainly when you're a learner and you've just got out on the road, uh, this, is, this is ideal. Switch gear, we have a high beam, low beam, a pass light on the front, indicators left and right and a horn. Other side we have the kill switch and the start button there. Right, let's have a look at the dash. So we have a indicator left hand, right hand warning there. Then we have a speedometer, a time, how many miles you've done, a gear indicator, 
which is very good. Obviously it's in neutral at the moment, so there's no gear showing and a decent fuel gauge. Right then, top boxes, let's see what we can get in them. So the top boxes all operate on the same key as your ignition key. Basically we will, it's a brand new bike, so it's a bit tight. So we'll lift up like so. And there you have it, what's that say? Subscribe for more reviews, ER. How did that get in there? Right, uh, so basically what have we got? We've got a loaf of bread. Now, why did I bring a loaf of bread? Well, it just gives you a gauge of what you can get in these boxes. So that pretty much goes right to the top of the box. Um, you probably got another inch on top of that and you could probably fit three loaves of bread in there. Now, if it was me, I'd upgrade to a 48 liter top box, which is only 80 pounds. Now let's take you down to the side panniers. Again, same key, unlock. And what we've got is a cargo net in there as well. Let's see what's in this one. Like the generation game. Right, and again, we've got the cargo net, and again, this is bolted to the scaffolding on the bike. So there you go. So overall, I think this is a, is a decent bike. Now, a lot of people might be thinking, well, he's just saying that. I, I'm really not. Now, I've been on the Sinus Forum for about two years now. Uh, and I haven't seen many people have um, issues. Yes, you get the old glitch here and there. And most people do say that the seat is uncomfortable and that the speedometer is not very accurate. Uh, but essentially all these people that do own them, love them. And uh, I've had a few people in the comments, forgive me, I can't remember your name, but there's a couple of people who have had the Sinister Terrain and have moved on obviously due to passing their test or um you know other reasons but um but they always you know you look in the comments and people do say that i love my sinister terrain we all move on from 125 so that is just a fact of life but you know what some people don't as well some people do just stay on l plates for you know a long long time and um I mean, my mate simon he's probably watching this he um he was on l plates for probably five or six years and uh you know it, this this bike will do pretty much anything you want it to do really if you want to go on a long trip fine it will do it you just have to go on the back road so you know as long as you're not in too much of a rush or, or don't want too much speed then this is all you need